Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Reseteer, shall we? Well, um, it has been a bit since I have played this game, um, and it's a game that I really, really have loved. I think I've played it a couple of times, actually, but one time I got... Um, very near beating it, although I don't know I did. I think I just made a whole bunch of money um, and might have called it a day. But it's just a game that is a tremendous amalgam of features that, you know, if you think about something like Stardew Valley, which mixes game features or Graveyard Keeper, it's, it's in that genre where you have a management sim aspect you're running your item shop then you go in dungeons and you know you have a zelda style dungeon game in there um and you have negotiations and hilarious uh anime interactions but really it's it stands apart uh because of the story and running the shop and if you've never seen this game uh you're in for a treat uh, it is an older game, uh, so you'll have to pardon the resolution and all of that, but it's a classic. Let's dive into it. We're going to start a new game, and here we go. Oh, boy. Okay, so there are, um, like I said, anime through, through and through, and there are Japanese... Uh, words that are said, um, but everything is kind of written here in English below for us. So Tyr says, oh, for the love of, she's still asleep. Uh, does she really not understand how important today is? Mm, and Reset says, Murple can't eat another bite but I can always find room for yummy candy mimble werble uh wake up please huh who what when's it Ohio Ohio oh tear good good morning we do not have time for good morning, Reset. Are you planning on spending the rest of your life dreaming of sweets? Today is the day we set for opening the store. Uh, we did? Oh yeah, we did. Merd, of all the... Listen, I like how she's, I guess, a Japanese speaking fairy through English translation, speaking French in translation. Anyway, listen, go wash your face and make yourself presentable. And then join me downstairs in the storefront. Okay, I'll be right down. All right. So here we are. Hey, sorry I kept you waiting. Okay, now we're in our little shop. And... You know, it makes me wonder, was this like a Sega Dreamcast game or a PlayStation 1 game? I'm not sure what console this was out for, but the loading screen with the disc um, leaves me wondering. I am playing it on Steam uh, on the PC, and I've always played it on the PC. But then again, um, maybe it was only released as an import for the consoles. I don't know. Hey, sorry I kept you waiting. <laughs> Okay, Tyr, let's open the shop right now. Capitalism, ho! That's the game of the game. It's capitalism. It's a cap sim. Patience, reset. It is a virtue you will need. We need to take care of a few matters before we open officially. Huh? Like what? Well, I somehow doubt that a store without anything to sell is going to attract all that much business. Indeed. Uh... Oh yeah, we don't have anything to sell. 
So, uh, what do we do? To start with, we need to establish a stock of items for the store. If we have nothing to sell, we cannot claim to be much of a shop. Indeed, that's true. Hmm. So where should we go to get stocked up? The best way, I think, would be to visit either the town market or the merchant's guild. We need to give our regards to the head of the guild regardless, so that should probably be our first stop. Oh, that's the place run by that old guy, right? The guild operates as a wholesaler for local merchants. So if we stop by, we can purchase an initial stock. It would not hurt to grov... Or give our polite regards to the guild chief either. We might need to grovel. We don't have much here. Especially since the guild is the organization that allows us to operate here. In the first place. Wakata. I understand. Okay, got it. Then let's go right now. When you want to leave the shop, head to the front door, currently located in the upper right-hand corner of the store. Ah, but I wanted to leave through the window like an action hero. To eternity and... Reset? Wow, we got a Toy Story reference. Okay. Alright, so... Um... I am using uh, a controller to play i find it works great and honestly even though this is an old game i love the mixture of uh sprites and 3d you know that that was kind of something that you did in this era of gaming and isn't necessarily done too much anymore but here's our shop and these are the display cases for our items and we have nothing to sell we have a thousand picks it's day one. Let's go. All right. So, um, the way I remember this working is there's different segments of the day. And once the day is done, um, you go to sleep and you start a new day. And so you can only do a certain amount of things per day. Um, if you return now, no time will pass. So if we go back to our shop... We don't lose any time, but if we go to the Merchant's Guild, for example, it says it will not take any time, but um, other places um, will take time. Like, if we go to the Adventurer's Guild and go to a dungeon, it'll take two periods of time uh, out of, it looks like, the four that we have for the day. So we're going to go to the Merchant's Guild right now. Hello. Guildmaster. There he is. I like how she's like that old guy. He doesn't look that old. Hmm, a girl and a fairy. You two are... Yes, you're Reset and that loan shark. What? Well, that is not, well, an incorrect assessment. Could I ask that you refrain from calling me a loan shark? Hey, she's a loan shark. That's right, mister. She and I are partners. Don't be mean. <laughs> forgive me, forgive me. Partners it is. So, how are the preparations for running that shop coming along? Quite well, thank you. In fact, we plan on opening today, so we stopped by to order uh, in order to show our gratitude for your help. Ah, very good. You two know what's what. If you have any problems, let me know. I'll be glad to help. We appreciate your kindness. Thank you. Um, we appreciate your kindness. Thank you very much. Not a problem at all. So, you came straight here to pick up some merchandise, right? Well, up to the counter then. Let's get you two sorted. This is our first time stocking up. Our funds are limited. So do not go completely overboard. I recommend purchasing no more than 10 items. All right. Wakata. Okay. All right. Before you stock up... Oh, he was going to say something, but then it skipped it for some reason. Time to stock up a bit, huh? Step on up. All right. So let's talk to him. Um, if there's anything you don't know, just ask. What is the guild? Right. 
So a guild is essentially a group of people in the same kind of business who cooperate with one another. Since the prices on items can vary from store to store, it's hard to do business if there isn't a base price between them, right? That's what the Merchant's Guild is for. We price fix. We manage wholesaling and keep prices stable throughout the city. That's why we require that everyone who wants to do business around here register with the guild. Don't worry, your store, Reseteer, is already in the books. Oh. So we have a shop called Reseteer, which is, I guess, our two names combined. It ain't all just paperwork and red tape, though. Now that you're a member, you can pick up stock for your shop here and you get access to a few other benefits, too. We're here to help, so feel free to make use of us, okay? Um, what can I do here? Here at the Guild, you'll always be able to get goods for a set price. Most of what we can get our hands on is practical stuff, though. Weapons, armor, clothes, adventuring necessities, and the like. The town's main market, who we work with, is where you can get things like foodstuffs, books, and other assorted knickknacks. The really flashy and rare stuff is a bit out of our league. If you've a mind to get your mitts on that kind of stuff, you'll have to go dungeon stomping yourself or buy it off a customer. Oh, we'll also buy off any excess stock you have. Mind, we buy low as a rule, so if you want to make an actual profit, you're better off selling to your customers. About merchant levels. Your merchant level is, well, your ability as a merchant. As it goes up, you'll figure out how to redecorate or even expand your store. Heck, you might even be able to convince me to let you have a look at some of our more uh, premium items. So how do you raise your level? Simple. Buy, sell, trade. This is an art, and you learn by doing. If there's anything you don't know, just ask. Um, oh, okay. No, no, I know this. Alright. And let's see. About the town. This city's getting a bit famous for the old ruins and the like that litter the surrounding countryside, so we've been seeing a steady stream of adventuring types coming in for a while now. They're all here to try and strike it rich off undiscovered treasures in the wilds. Hunting for fat loot, they call it. I mean, ain't it the best just hunting for that fat loot? And so, if I memory serves, another really awesome part about this game is basically that you can sell stuff to adventurers who walk into your shop, and the better gear you sell them, the stronger they become, and they can like then come sell you good stuff that they found from the dungeon. So you have, uh, you can like invest in them kind of by giving them good deals on things so that they in turn can sell you stuff that you can rip off, I mean sell the rest of the townsfolk. Well, I don't know what they see in chasing after oversized loots, but their presence has also brought a lot of new merchants to the city. I sure won't complain. Business has never been better. If you're looking for one, hmm, a few might be resting in the plaza. I bet most of them will take to the city's biggest pub, though. It's never too hard to sell those wandering types a little bit of liquid pleasure. Even I go in there for a little nip every now and then, every day. The more faithful will probably hang about the city chapel. We do get a few like that now and then on a pilgrimage or a quest to find old holy relics. Or er, praise be to the seekers and all that, of course. I, I'm not really religious. I, uh, I spend my time drinking. You might check the Adventurers Guild proper, too. They're in charge of making sure the exploration efforts aren't a total bedlam. They even succeed. Sometimes. Now keep in mind that these places are only open at certain times. For example, that pub only opens in the evening. We're pretty much open all the time now. Okay. Wait. If you're always open, how do you find time to visit that pub? For that matter, when do you go home? Little Missy, if you had the kind of wife I do, you'd be at work or in the sauce at all hours, too. Oh my goodness. This just got really dark. I'm sorry, Guildmaster. You seem to be in a tumultuous relationship. Merd, forget I asked. Um, what about unknown items? Now, if you go dungeon diving, you'll find a lot of stuff that you won't be able to identify at first. 
in particular, I'll bet my hat, which is a really nice hat, two-tone hat, um, you'll find a lot of what are commonly called mystery ingredients by the adventurers. At first, you'll probably be tearing your hair out over all the junk you keep finding in those places, but as your merchant level goes up, you'll be able to sort out the stuff you find and pick the best materials and whatnot from the lot. Oh, if you manage to get out of those death traps safely, you'll have time to identify everything safely. That means you won't know what you're carrying till you leave, though. So it's just a great game. You can't see, I'm just like salivating at all of these systems that unlock. But yeah, you level up your merchant level, which makes you better at identifying items. Also better at selling. You can sell more, you can expand your shop. It's a really cool game loop. Uh, about fusion? Once a few merchant levels are under your belt, you'll be able to fuse items here at the Guild Hall. There's quite a few items you can only get by using fusion, so I'd get real familiar with that furnace if I were you. Remember, what you put in affects what you get out in, of fusion. If you put in some materials of, say, plus two quality, then you'll get an item of similar quality as the result. Keep an eye on what you're fusing, too. You don't want to waste good materials on some mediocre thing that you can just buy somewhere. Another thing to keep in mind, it can be real tempting to keep your best quality items to yourself for personal use, but your customers know quality goods when they see them, and you'll earn a lot of respect if you sell top shelf merchandise. There's a couple of stages to what you can pull off with Fusion as you pick up some merchant levels, so experiment and be sure to come back here often to see what you can make. Alright, cool. So let's buy stuff. So... Um, we can buy a worn sword, which is a worn-out, dented chip sword. Still better than going into the wild barehanded, though. And we buy them for 140. We don't have any. Or we could buy a long sword that's 840, which is extremely expensive. A standard, lightweight long sword, perfect for novices learning the art of sword play. Now we can also go and buy daggers, stabs, bows, spears, gloves. Clothes, robes, breastplates, armor, bracelets, shields, hats, helms, charms. Oh my goodness. Okay, so what we want to do is buy as much of something as we can. But we don't want to buy all of one thing. And different customers come in wanting different items. So uh, I'm going to try to get a good variety all right, so let's buy some clothes. Um, I'll buy one. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to buy two. And then we can buy a raincoat. We can buy a scrap plate. We can buy a wooden armband. I'm just buying a bunch of cheap items. A wool hat and um, a souvenir charm. And in that way, we have spent all our money, and we're ready to go. Right then, will that be all? <laughs> yep, this is perfect. We shall return when our stocks run low again. Ha, I'm looking forward to it. Here, a little something extra as a startup gift. Hey, a hunk of bread. Yay, walnut bread. Thanks a bunch. All right, little lady, give it your all. Capitalism, ho! Well, Adam Smith would be proud of us at any rate. That's right. Let's go sell some stuff. Okay. Um, now, if we go back to the shop from out here, we will uh, spend one period of time. We can go to the market, the chapel, the adventurer's guild, but I'm going to go back to the shop and sell stuff. That's pretty much what I'm here for. I only have 20 money left, 20 picks left. So there you go. Very well. It's time to give you a crash course on the basics of running an item shop. Now, I will say at this point, I don't know if this will be explained later or if somehow I skipped it, but I started a new game. I didn't think I skipped anything, but um, I don't know if her father owned this shop, but it's in debt and Tyr is here to like collect our debt and it She's a loan shark, and the only way to get out of our debt is to pay her back, I think. And so we're trying to, like, get our dad's shop out of debt and bring it back into prominence. 
maybe? Or maybe I just made that up. Anyway, let's figure this out. Okay, what do I do first? How do we run a shop? First, we need to put some items on display. If we do not have our goods out for people to see, we can hardly expect the customers to buy them, after all. So I just need to get these near the counters. Just so. Once you know where you wish to place something, choose what you wish to place in that spot by pressing the primary button. Primary button? You will understand when you try it. Trust me. Now, remember what you place will affect how people perceive the store. So think carefully before you place something. Right. Now then, to start off, why not line up what we purchased on one of the counters? Okay. All right, and I can move around. Um. Oh boy. The trigger opens this screen, huh? Okay. Um, I am gonna turn up the music just a little bit. The music's awesome. I don't know why I had it so quiet. Um, let's see. This is good. All right. Now, if I, if memory serves, if you put stuff near the window, people will come into the shop to buy it because they can see it. It's like you want to put your best stuff up here. So I'm going to put my most expensive items up here. Like the raincoat. May I speak with you a moment? Sure, what is it? Those counters by the window. Items you place there are visible to anyone passing by on the street. Oh, she's explaining it. As such, putting eye-catching items, the sort of thing that makes you think, I want to buy this more than anything on the counters, is a core principle of running a shop like this. In a very real way, those counters are the face of the shop, and what is placed there greatly affects interest in our business. So choose what to place there very, very carefully. Oh, okay. Wow, I never thought about it like that. Okay, I'll be careful. All right. So then, let me put the scrap plate there. Let me put on... What else do I have that's, like, really expensive? All that wool hat. And then uh, my souvenir charm. You got it. And then we'll put bread and another set of clothes. Clothes. I'm just putting stuff all over the place, spreading it out. There we go. All right, that should do for displaying our wares. Are you sure it doesn't look dumb? I... Do not worry. Everything looks good enough for a first attempt. Now I need to teach you how to actually sell things. Please go sit at the counter. Oh. Right out. All right. So we got to move over here behind the counter. And here we are. Now I sit down. And once you sit down, you could like commit to selling. And then time is passing. Well then, the items are in place, and now you need to learn how to actually sell things to people without embarrassing yourself. Okay-o. So to start with, I will lecture on the actual process of selling an item we have displayed. Yes, Professor. If the students do not listen, they do not get any credit. Uh, right. Now then, when a customer enters, be sure to greet them with a nice big welcome. Um, welcome. Greeting the customer helps them feel comfortable and relaxed while in the store. Their comfort is fundamental to our business. Remember that as we continue. Now, a typical customer will find an item they want on our displays, and then they will come over to the counter to pay for it. Let me demonstrate. Could I get this, please? She wants to buy a longsword for 1200 Uh, um, uh... What they want will be in the target window. You will also be able to see the name and the base price. Pay close attention to that base price. Also, if you press button 3, you can view expanded information on the item in question. Consult the custom.exe program included with Reseteer if you wish to check or alter your button configuration. Indeed. Wait, button 3, custom.exe? Focus, Reset. Your life is hard enough to control as it is. Um, okay. Now then, next. You must decide what price you wish to offer. Okay. In general, you want to try and name a price higher than the base. 
try naming a price, if you will. Uh, less... Okay. So, um... You likely noticed that the base price serves as your default. To raise the offer, press up. Press up, okay. Um, so... Let's go 1500 All right. But yes, very good. That is how you adjust your offer. As might be obvious, if a customer is satisfied with your offer, it is a sale, and you get a little bit of experience along with the money. If your price is too high, however, a customer can simply walk out. Learning to determine the proper price, there lies the challenge. Now, if a customer disagrees with the price, but not so much that they want to storm out, then you can negotiate. Remember what I said about comfort earlier? That is the key here. Offer a price, but do not make it so outrageous that the customer feels you are not acting in good faith. So if they disagree but say, but stay, offer a new price. Ideally, you will lower your offer a little, and they will take it and give you a sale. Some customers may just be trying to sniff out a better price when they are really willing to pay your initial price. However, whether or not you risk testing that possibility is up to you. And this is the kind of base of the game. This is like how you do the shopping combat, if you will. You negotiate, you haggle. How long can you keep haggling? Well, that depends on how regular customer the person in question is. As we are starting out, you will not be able to haggle for very long because our merchant level stinks and we don't have regular customers. But after customers begin to trust us a little, you can haggle for a longer period of time. Well, time to put that theory into practice. Um, okay. Ah, welcome. Could I get this, please? The long sword. Oh, okay. I pick a price, right? Needs to be higher than the base price. Up button. Uh, all right. Let's start at like 1700. Okay. At this level, you will likely end up hagging a little. All right. Now, for the fine art of haggling. Theoretically, what you wish to do is lower your price slowly. But as I mentioned, there is a limit to how long you can haggle. The idea is to deduce a customer's desired price and go from there. You say deduce the desired price, but how do I? A large number of stores sell at about 30% over base price. It is not hard and fast rule, but people will usually accept that price level. Usually. If you can manage to go over that, you will make a lot of money, but you not want to risk driving away a customer. Right then. So as a customer, I am haggling. Could you make it a little bit cheaper? Okay, gotta make it cheaper, but not too cheap. All right. How is this? This is technically cheaper, but still high. It would be up to the temperament of the customer as to whether or not you make a sale. Well, that covers about everything. Now let us put the entire lecture into practice all at once. If you can sell me an item, you will be ready for what lies ahead. All right, let's do it. Let's begin. All right. That's right. Good morning. Welcome to the shop. Hello. I would like this, please, the steel sword. All right, so let's start at a big high price. 4,200. Hmm, could you go a little lower, perhaps? All right, so let's try the sweet spot, 130. Okay. Yes, an excellent price. Thank you so much. Yay, I sold it for 3,900. Excellent. Let us do that one more time, just to be sure. All right. We're really practicing here. Hello, welcome to Reciteer. Oh, they want the steel sword. All right, let's go up. 140. Okay. Could you go a little lower? All right, let's go down to 130. Okay. Could you go a little lower? Wow, they want it even lower, huh? Um, that's about it. Yes, an excellent price. Thank you so much. Yay, I sold it for 3800 Expertly done. If you ever wish to practice again, simply ask me anytime we are in the shop. Cool. So, that is essentially how it goes. You are quite good for someone who has never done this before. And that's the, the bit of the game. And I'm going to have to teach myself how to do it again. But there's different kinds of customers who can come in, and they all have, like, their own proclivities. Like, I remember these 
old men that are really stingy and they always want some for cheap. And you have to learn like what people will pay. And you kind of have to figure that out. And I generally err on the side of caution, with risking like making the deal over trying to get that high price. But let's see how it goes. <laughs> really? We still have a little bit of time left today, so let's go ahead and open the store proper. If anyone comes in, simply handle them in the same way that we just practiced. Whoa, are you sure it'll be okay? Do not worry. As the saying goes, salesmanship is more of an art than it is a science. You learn as you go. Now then, I will open us up. Go and sit at the counter. Okay. Here comes a lady. Hello, welcome to Reciteer. She wants the bread. This, please. All right. Let's gouge her. A bit expensive, isn't it? All right. How's that? Yes, that will be fine. Bang. All right, cool. So we made some money, and our merchant level went up, as you saw. Now, when you start getting really, really good at this, you can, like, one-shot people. And there's no negotiation. They'll just, like, buy it right away. And you get a bunch of bonus experience, if I'm remembering right. Gee, I just sold the walnut bread for 130 picks. Awesome. Dot, dot, dot. Congratulations, you did well. I sold stuff. I. Me. Reset. I sold stuff. Like, to people. Oh, boy. My dialogue with myself is next level. Hey, Tear, I, I'm so happy. I, I did it. Tear, I did it. Papa, I did it. And that's how we started running an item shop. Oh, you're wondering why we started an item shop at all? Ah, okay. So, they are going to go back and explain it. I didn't miss it. Okay, here we go. Easy Game Station presents... They're going to explain how Tyr and I first met. A tale of a fairy... A girl and how to run an item shop indeed that's our job rest here let's see Yep, the calendar says it's been three months since Papa left. I don't get why he suddenly said, I'm going to be a hero, and then took off without saying when he'd be back. Oh, no. I really hope he's okay. I'm getting lonely. Well, I shouldn't worry too much about him. The best thing about him is how tough he is. He'll be okay. Knock, knock. Huh? Papa wouldn't knock. Who is that? Yes, who is it? Huh? There's nobody here. Wait, what? At my feet. Konbanwa. Oh, no. Good evening. Konbanwa is indeed. Uh, you are Mademoiselle Reset Lemongrass. Um, Miss Fairy? Pardon me, but I am the one asking questions. Again, you are Reset Lemongrass? Um, um, yes, I'm Reset. My name is Tyr. I am an agent of the Term Finance Company. Uh-oh. Finance Company? I am here to collect payment on a loan paid out to your father. He is the contract... Here is the contract and my identification. Uh... Loan repayment? I, uh... In plainer terms, I am here to get our money back. If you are incapable of facilitating repayment, this house will be seized as collateral in order to repay the loan. Facilitating? Collateral? S Seize? What? 
But, 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 but I, Papa, Papa isn't, he is not here. Yes, I see that now. Monsoor lemongrass disappeared following a fracas atop the logo. Oh my gosh, look at that file photo. It's like Dragon Quest. He's on a volcano fighting a dragon. A local volcano. So we assumed he might have returned here. Oh, man. Even if he is not, however, the contract covers this eventuality. Covers this. Quite. As the sole remaining member of his household, we shall require that you pay his debts in his stead. <laughs> what? But how am I supposed to... I barely have enough money to live by... by myself. Naturally, we are not demanding it all be repaid at once. There is still a small amount of time before any payment is due. Therefore... Am I going to get sold off in parts to distant foreign lands to repay Papa's debt? I wonder if I can survive with only two internal organs. Aww, maybe if I eat a lot of spinach, that can replace my blood and... Oh, but I don't want to be a sailor. What am I going to do? Ahem, please listen to me for a moment. I have no clue where you're getting these ludicrous ideas from, but I would never do such a thing. Quite the opposite. In fact, I was sent here to ensure that you wouldn't have to resort to such, well, absurd methods to pay us back. But what? I have been sent to support you to the fullest of my ability so that you may repay the debt via labor. <coughs> what? But I've never worked a single day in my life. Experience has no bearing in this case. All that matters is whether or not you're willing to work. Aww. If you do not wish to work, then that is it. The house is terms, and I will have to ask you to leave the premises. Oh, no. As the saying goes, those who do not work do not eat. So, Miss Lemongrass, which will it be, work or the house? I'll work, then. Splendid. But I don't even know what I could do. Actually, I already have an idea on that front. You are aware, of course, that this city is an adventuring hub. In addition, this house faces out onto one of the main city lanes. Therefore, I propose converting the house into an item store. Item store? <coughs> what? Really? Yeah, this is how we do it, huh? This is how it all came to pass. Reset? She's looking for me. Mademoiselle Lemongrass? Uh, I was only gone for a little while to do market research. Where could she have gone? Ha, I'm being silly. Of course she fled. Why would she not? All I did was threaten to take away everything she ever knew and loved. Asking her to turn the house into an item shop was foolish, even if it was to repay the debt. The poor girl must be terribly confused. And on top of, top of that, her father is probably... Uh, wait, outside. Look. Yeah, Yayness, it's done. Yeah. Hey, Tyr, look, it's done. What is that? It's our shop sign, of course. Doesn't it look cool? You can't be a shop without one of these, you know. Yes, well, it is quite well made, however... <laughs> Hey, hey, I've always been good at making stuff. Be that as it may, while the sign is nice, I... Hmm. Huh? Is there a problem? Well, the name. You are quite sure you have thought that through? Look at that sign. Well, we're partners, right? You said so. So put Reset and Tear together and... Reseteer. Isn't it neat? Well, that is to say the sentiment is commendable, but it's the two of us opening the store, so the name should reflect that, right? You don't like it? Really, it's not that, but well, that is... <laughs> then it's decided. Reseteer, ho! Reseteer. Mispronounce it even slightly, and... Reketeer. Racket... Racketeer. This job is going to be even more absurdly difficult than I originally suspected, I fear. That is pretty funny. We're into racketeering here. 
And so a fairy suddenly entered my life. One thing was for sure, this wasn't going to be dull. Not at all. Merd. How is it possible to sleep this much each day? How? Mmm, cheer. Mmm, let's do the very best we can. Reset, wake up! What? How? Who's on first? Oh, Tear, right. Good morning. The clock does not have a good morning hand. Reset, you are the proprietor of an item shop now. You must learn to be responsible and not sleep the day away. Right. Why in the name of heaven are you smiling so much? That smile you had while sleeping is just getting bigger. Oh, no reason. I just think I saw something nice in my dreams. Tear, let's give it our all. Well, if you really are d dedicated to making this work, wash yourself and meet me downstairs. Hi. Uh, will do. Here we go. Day two. All right, day two. So, I have an item shop and stuff, and it's all cool and awesome. So, uh, what do I do now? That is up to your judgment. If you sit at the counter, we can open immediately. Or we can reorganize the shop, or we could even go search for new stock around town or elsewhere. Yikes, that's a ton of options. How do I choose? It's as I said earlier. Running a place like this is more of an art than it is something you can simply follow a map through. Simply pick something. We will deal with what comes. Well, okay. Alright, so I'm going to... Um, just pick these up. Is there a quick way to do that? Yeah, okay. And put the clothes there. I just rearranged a little bit. I like this camera angle. And let's open the shop. I don't have enough money to really go out and buy stuff. I don't want to waste time. I am ready to go now. Open the store. Here we go. Oh, we got people coming in. Oh, no, not this kid. Hello, welcome to Reseteer. This is for my brother. This girl usually doesn't have money. It's a shame. All right, so let's go to... 420. Okay. You can't make it just a bit less? I sure can. How's that? This is getting dumb. She's out. I screwed up, didn't I? All right, she can't pay that much. Hello, welcome to Reseteer. My daughter-in-law asked me to pick this up. All right. I just saw her. All right, what do you think about this? Is that, it's that expensive? You can't go a little lower? All right, what about like 129? Madness, oh my God. These people don't wanna buy it. Oh my, I just wasted the whole first period of the day not selling stuff. All right, let's try to sell it cheaper. Let's lower that price. You just get these bad customers at first who don't have a lot of money. All right. Would you sell this to me, my girl? All right. I'm going to try like 124. Is it really that expensive? All right, what about... Like, 115. A good deal, little lady. All right. So, it's not great, but I at least got some experience. Hi there, what can I get you? This is for my brother. All right. I'm going to try to sell it to her on one shot. How much money do you have? Okay. Ooh. See, I got a little... Just combo. 12 extra experience for selling it in one shot. Again, it's not a huge amount of money, but I'd rather sell than not sell. Alright. He wants to buy this. Okay, let's see if he'll buy it for 120 Yes. And if you sell things consecutively, you saw I got just combo plus 2 and then just combo plus 4. I think you could start to like 
chain up your experience, so you want to do consecutive sales. Yay, I sold scrap plate for 240. And look at this. We've already like made our money back, basically. Pretty good. And let's go ahead and do it again. Open the store. Let's sell the rest of our stuff. Hi there. Hey, it's the Guildmaster. Can I purchase this, please? Sure. What do you think about 120? Well, that seems fair enough. Boom. Thank you so much. He might actually have good money and buy it for 130. Oh hi! Oh, it's you. Can I buy this, please? Yes. Um, I'm gonna try to just nail it. Damn! Got the combo going. I sold the souvenir charm for 343. Terrific. And all we have left are like two pieces of clothing. I don't know if anybody will buy it, but let's just try it. Hey! Alright, let's see if he'll pay like just regular price for it. Yeah, he will. He'll buy it for 130 Sweet. Good man. Alright, that's all for today. Look at that. I mean, we exceeded expectations. We got 676 profits, and our score went up by 201. Bam. Beautiful. Reset, may I have a moment, please? Okay. Sure, what's up? Concerning the debt, I have a suggestion concerning its repayment. You do? Paying it all back at once is wholly beyond your means, so I recommend smaller weekly payments to slowly chip away at it. Wholly beyond? Uh, you know, you never told me how big Papa's debt is exactly. That is because you would faint if you found out. For now, it is a secret. I'd faint? As the store begins to build up steam, we will increase payment size. The repayment date nearest to the current date along with the amount due, will be displayed on the calendar in the main menu. Please be sure to check it regularly. Okay, I'll keep an eye on it. Alright, so I gotta meet the calendar date. And, um, I can do that here. And it looks like, um, I need to... Today's the third, and I have today and four, what, four more days to make 10,000? Oh my god, I'm going to have to start selling stuff like gangbusters. So I'm going to want to focus on getting some more expensive items, I guess, uh, and selling those so that I can sell those quickly and then go buy even more expensive items and sell those to make profits, I suppose. We'll have to see if that works, but that's a lot of money that's due right there. Goodness me. All right, well... Everyone, I think this is a great place to end the episode. We got into the story. We ran the shop for a, a full day there. We sold everything. We need to go buy new stuff. And we're almost merchant level 2. Um, it is just a real treat to play this game again. It's so cute and charming. And yet, also, uh, just really fun to play. I'm curious what you guys think. Have you played this game before? Do you like this game? Are you interested to see more? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please remember to give it a like. It helps out the channel tremendously. And if you want to help out further, there are links in the description below for becoming a member and a patron. And I want to say thank you for watching. Have an excellent evening or day. I will check you guys next time. Take care.